although he was a high performing athlete who understood the importance of of these things but they hadn't actually brought it into his awareness in the workplace yeah and i think that's really interesting because we talk about different contexts and that is that you know, sometimes people can be really organised in their home affairs, but when it comes to their working life, they don't have the same systems and structure. And we get a lack of conscious awareness that when we create a system as such, it actually creates a sense of confidence, a sense of capability. And I want to talk about this just for a second in the term, in terms of modelling excellence, because when we look at the difference between scale and growth in a business, scale is being able to be able to do more with less, right? So being able to improve efficiencies, being able to improve productivity, um, being able to perhaps, you know, not just grow expenses as well as grow the team, et cetera. So there's a, there's a marked difference between what is growth and what is scale. And I think a lot of people miss the mark, not just the individuals, but teams as such as well. And so when we talk about creating confidence in a team, a lot of the time the word training comes up. We need to train the team what to do. But if you have five different team members and they all do a slight variation of what is the uh, the things that they need to do to, to produce a particular result, then what happens is you end up with potential variations. So if we hit a roadblock or we hit a bottleneck, then what do we do? And if there's not a uniform way around producing that, then what happens is confusion comes up. And usually when people have confusion, they stop. And they stop because they're afraid that they'll make a mistake. And when we have fear and decision-making in the same band camp, then we have zero confidence. And so I think one of the things we've talked about time as being one of the key areas where people need to systemize and that, you know, a lot of people have a lack of conscious awareness around how they spend their time. My favorite example is when we talk with leaders and we say, okay, show us your diary. It's like, oh, I'm so busy at the moment. I've got so many things on. It's like, okay, let's go back to the basics. Let's look at the calendar. And they'll share their Outlook calendar with us and there's nothing in it. And it's like, well, you're so busy. How are you going to justify this to your senior management in terms of what's actually keeping you busy? I don't know what's keeping me busy. There's just lots of interruptions. And so, you know, when we talk about going back to the foundations, it's about really putting in those placeholders and finding rhythm and harmony. And I think the same is true for confidence in our ability to undertake a task. You know, I, I know that there's a lot of stigma around, you know, not wanting to micromanage teams in today's, you know, topical issues around being a good leader, around being able to build A-grade teams. A lot of the time micromanagement is frowned upon. <clears throat> and I think the label itself for a lot of people, when you, you when you think of the term micromanagement, it just sounds like a bullying affair. I, I don't know. That's the thing that comes to mind when I when sometimes I talk to leaders about it. You know that you know that people there's an absence of trust um, that people are trying to micromanage every single step. Um, and I just wanted to take this opportunity to talk about the fact that we have what we call a situational leadership frame. And when we look at situational leadership, when someone comes into a business or they're undertaking a brand new task that they've never done before, usually there's a lot of uncertainty. And when there's uncertainty, that leads to a lack of confidence to act or to decide. And so one of the things that's really great about looking at systems and why they're so important is systems are designed to be able to create confidence so that people can build trust in themselves that as long as they follow the process or they follow the system that they will be able to decide without consequences and they'll be able to have the confidence to undertake something. And I think this is a really important factor that a lot of people will negate when they're looking at systems. And the, the main reason that they negate it is I think there's a lot of emerging leaders and maybe even some experienced leaders that are so afraid that their teams are going to perceive them as being micromanaging them if they start putting in effective systems. 